What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon, kind of early evening I guess in some spots. Uh, it is March 17th, 2021, about 4.30 p.m. Just going to do an update video here real quick. Um, taking a look at the uh, Earthquake 3D globe. Shows that latest earthquake there, 4.7 earthquake. Kind of a, in an odd area, but not, not really necessarily too odd out here in this part of the world. We can check out the specific details of that uh, quake on a, a different model here real quick. You can see also live seismograph stations there. Showing a little bit of activity there at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. But I do want to pull up the uh, latest map there from the USGS uh, 2.5 and above for the United States and the territorial states. Uh, but uh, 4.5 and above pretty much elsewhere around the globe. There's that 4.7 zooming in here, right around the, uh, what is that? The Atlas Mountains area in Algeria. Kind of a odd spot, but there is some plate boundaries that run through here. Of course, you got the Mediterranean Sea, Greece, seen all that earthquake there uh, a week or so ago. Uh, a couple weeks, I believe. A little bit of movement over here, 10 kilometers below the surface for this 4.7. In an area, uh, what is that, Constantine? Constantine, ooh, could that be a sign? Who knows? Uh, let's see. Historical earthquake activity. I don't see a whole lot on this map here, folks. But then again, I'm not seeing anything on here for some reason. That's a little odd. <laughs> not for sure what's going on there. I'll have to double check that. But uh, yeah, 4.7, the latest quake there on the globe. Not a big one. Just uh, kind of making a little noise out there around the Algeria area. Northern California region shaken up a tad bit. There has been an increase in tremor along the Northern California area of the Cascadia subduction zone that sits underneath the North American continent here. Uh, kind of does its thing and slips once in a while, creates these surface quakes and also back builds pressure along the Cascadia fold and mega thrust area, fold and thrust belt, I should say. Some movement around Mount Lassen as well. This is kind of interesting here. I may not have to go to Hawaii to see a volcanic eruption. Not, I doubt it. There's, I don't believe there's anything uh, to worry about when it comes to Mount Lassen. A couple small microquakes. Uh, looks like around close to the summit area of Mount Lassen. Uh, 0.2 and a 0.4 at 2.4 kilometers downstream. A little bit larger earthquake away from the area in the northern Sierra Nevada mountains of northern California around Shingletown. <clears throat> but then again, that's only another 1.8. Pretty small microquake activity. Nothing to worry about. Uh, at the moment there at Mount Lassen. Uh, Southern California kind of seeing a dwindling down of activity compared to yesterday. Uh, far as the swarming goes in the Salton Sea, that has all but completely disappeared, surprisingly. And of course, this is the all magnitude, so we're not even seeing any more microquakes down there. So we'll take their word for it that things are clearing up and calming down around the Salton Sea area. San Andreas Fault System up along the creeping section south of San, so San Jose and the Bay Area. Bay Area showing some microquakes there and also inland on the Hayward Fault southeast extension there showing a little bit of movement uptick uh, along with um, quite a few microquakes there along the creeping section uh, but other than that no major quake activity to report there's that little quake off the coast 3.6 in the Trinidad area well well off the coast of Trinidad uh, Trinidad doesn't sit way out in the Pacific but uh, this is kind of out there West of the thrust area, the locked section, kind of in the Gorda ridges, but uh, in a flat area. <clears throat> the ridges are, of course, pressure uh, kind of springing up, if you will, over time, creating hills, mountains, ridges, due to the enormous pressure that's being created here in this very um, dynamic setup of plate tectonics here with the Juan de Fuca plate. Uh, 4.9 kilometers down below the surface for this 3.6 there, kind of watching that area. Uh, Pacific Northwest seeing a little uptick in activity. Um, don't believe nothing to worry about. A couple small quakes around the Rainier area. Mount St. Helens pretty clear, although outside of there, about 50, 70 miles or so. Some more microquakes around the region. Uh, Idaho seeing a little increase in microquakes as well. And also some movement, uh, looks like northwest of Helena, Montana, stretching down into Yellowstone National Park, where we will go to right now to check out the latest uh, seismograph stations there at uh, Yellowstone <clears throat> and it's pretty clear pretty clear as day uh, to see that there is a swarm that is ongoing and uh, I kind of mentioned that earlier uh, we'll start off here over around Lake Yellowstone now there now this here get off of that get off of that 
Hold on a second here, folks. There we go. <laughs> I hate when it does that. Hear me click my mouse mouse in the background a couple hundred times. Um, so yeah, we're looking at a, a station over at Lake Yellowstone, seismograph station, and this shows uh, readings. And there's hundreds, hundreds of small recordings going on here, little microquakes of some sort. And I believe firmly now, after looking at some of the other stations, that this is uh, definitely earthquake activity, not ice related. Um, I don't believe that. It's looking more so like plate or uh, um, definitely earthquake activity being picked up here. And it's getting, it kind of dwindled down throughout the day, but you can see these distinct little spikes still indicating earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park. Now, while this area is seeing quite a bit of, uh, of movement, we're also kind of noticing uh, some further uptick, a little bit further to the north and west. Um, over here around Madison River is showing a little increase in earthquake activity as well. A little bit larger in the magnitudes there. Not much. These are still microquakes, but uh, they're not little bitty specks of uh, probably a point, maybe a point one or something, something like that. Uh, these are probably getting up in the one range, uh, 1.2, 1.3, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit larger. Uh, but definitely an uptick around the Madison River area, northwest corner uh, of Yellowstone National Park. Not as many quakes, but there's definitely a handful here and very distinct and, like I said, much larger uh, in the activity or in the uh, magnitude there. And it showed up very nicely on other stations around the region. Norris Junction, I'm not for sure what's up with that, or Norris Museum. Uh, their station there is kind of, well, it's the amplification on the seismograph is... Uh, uh, probably turned down too much, meaning that it's not really picking up anything. So it flatlines and squa uh, squashes everything that uh, that uh, is happening. You know, it looks like maybe it picked up one of the quakes there, maybe one of the larger ones that st uh, struck in the region, but it's still not uh, correct when it comes to picking up the uh, the data as it should uh, as it should be compared to all these other stations. Also, Old Faithful there being kind of toned down there. No uh, data being being uh, amplified to be picked up. But definitely showing up on all these other stations that are operational and normal. Uh, Norris Junction, Upper Falls, picking up the earthquake activity as well. Here's Norris Junction. You can see that microquake activity bleeding over onto, the, uh, onto this station as well. So uh, definitely a swarm of some sort going on there at Yellowstone National Park. It's not a mega swarm. It's not a... A major swarm by any means just a, uh, a little take note type of thing we can see stuff like this turn into a, um, a rapidly developing um, a swarm you know this is gonna take off pretty crazy if it decides to go that way uh, it's hard to say at the moment if it will but uh, something to take note the trimmer map has not been updated yet uh, updates around 6 p.m. my time this is from last night you can see the uh, ball of trimmer or I should not ball but it definitely looks like a ball there quite a few trimmer uh, measurements being picked up uh, the Cascadia subduction zone there in Northern California underneath the North American North American plate this is a slippage area down dip downstream about 30 45 kilometers or so underneath the surface there where uh, the Juan de Fuca plate further subducts underneath the North American uh, and of course that build up back build up of pressure along the Cascadia continues uh, to this day, and uh, one day ultimately it will release uh, th that buildup. Uh, what else we got, folks? Um, a little bit of aftershock activity off the coast of Russia still from that 6.6 .6 that struck uh, over 24 hours now. Just uh, quite a few upper fours, uh, 4.9 there being the largest. So movement around the Japan area as well, five pointer. Looks like activity along the Kermadec Trench area has uh, completely diminished, according to the USGS here. Kind of odd to see, right? Considering there was a, uh, a quite a bit of movement there a couple weeks ago, that largest earthquake, the 8.1 that struck down here. Also 7.3 uh, north of the Big Island, or north of the uh, mainland here. And, uh, and some other large quakes around that area, all along the same day, has completely stopped. Um, but of course, the EMSC website could potentially show uh, further movement, we'll check that out real quick on their site because they show a little bit more activity than uh, uh, the USGS. Looks like there's a couple quakes there. 
uh, last 50 earthquakes or so. 4.4, but either way, it looks as though activity is definitely dying down in that region of the world. Movement kind of focusing up here to the north now. You can see that increase in movement um, along the Indonesia area, stretching up into the Philippines. Um, and of course, the Russia area got that six pointer, 6.6. .6. Um, and now we're just kind of kind of waiting to see uh, exactly where this is going to uh, continue to build pressure here. Just uh, we haven't seen a whole lot around Japan. I mean, we we got that what is it, a five pointer that struck uh, within the last 24 hours, but we really haven't seen a whole lot. Let's go back seven days, 4.5 and above. This kind of shows us the areas that could we could potentially see some further movement. Hold on a second here. Make sure everything's running good. Yep. Um, and of course, seven days, 4.5 and above, massive amount of activity along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, Japan has seen a little bit, but not a tremendous amount. Just some some smaller quakes, that five pointer, a couple upper fours. Uh, just not a whole lot in this region here. So I believe we could potentially see some further movement up here uh, to kind of match the activity as going down, um, going on down south here and to the north of uh, Japan. So just be on guard. Uh, Kind of keep you guys updated on that uh, if need be. I know the severe weather out there in the east has... Uh... Hold on one second, folks. All right, we're going to end this stream. We'll chat at you guys here in a little bit. Uh, somebody just pulled up, so we'll chat at you guys a little bit later.